Good evening. Sorry, we're running just a few minutes late here. We're a little late coming out of our exec session. Um, the time is 7.36, and I will call this public hearing and regular business meeting of mayor and council for the city of Snellville, Georgia, for Monday, January 28, 2019, to order. And tonight we'll have an invocation from Pastor Joe Lewis. Is he here? I don't see him or Tommy here tonight. Father Syriac, would you like to stand in and give us an invocation? Come on up to the podium. This is Father Syriac from Snellville, or St. Oliver's. I do the same thing I almost always do in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord our God, that we come before you this evening. Um, we ask your special power, guidance, and wisdom as we gather for this uh, meeting, this council meeting of the city of Snellville. Watch over each and every one of us and that this council may always be guided by the wisdom and um, the knowledge that is needed to enter into deliberations and make decisions that will give um, and benefit the people of uh, the city of Snellville and everyone may be cared for and justice and peace may be always be restored. We ask you, Lord, to be with us this evening. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, Father Syriac. We call him Syriac O'Brien. <laughs> yes, yes. Because I can't pronounce his last name. Okay, and then we have the Pledge to the Flag by Kurt Schultz. Everyone, please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kurt. Next, we have a proclamation. Proclamation 2019-01, recognition of St. Oliver's Catholic Church winning Best Tree with the most donated items at the third annual Snellville Festival of Trees for 2018. Whereas the third annual Festival of Trees was created by Snellville Tourism and Trade to allow business owners, churches, schools, and residents the opportunity to showcase their Christmas trees in Snellville City Hall while helping their community give hunger the boot. And whereas all non-perishable food items, toiletries, toys, and monetary donations were accepted and placed under the tree of choice with each item registering as a vote. All items were donated to the Southeast Gwinnett Co-op to give hunger the boot. And whereas nine entries displayed trees throughout the community room with a combined effort of over 5,527 donations. And whereas St. Oliver's Catholic Church parishioners donated generously with a spirit of giving back to the community, green advent bags filled the community room at City Hall on a regular basis. Over 5,032 items were donated for our community. Therefore, I, Barbara Bender, Mayor of the City of Snellville, Georgia, where everybody is proud to be somebody, do hereby join with our City Council and the citizens of Snellville to recognize the faithful servants of St. Oliver's Catholic Church who are called to action by faithful giving and joyful witness to the community for their outstanding support in the third annual Snellville Festival of Trees, proclaimed this 28th day of January, 2019. So if I can have the representatives from the church uh, come up to the podium.
we have a plaque also for St. Oliver's. We appreciate the efforts of the, the Hispanic community that really stepped up and engaged the whole church, and we thank you very much. So we want to introduce our gratitude to the church and our family. So there you go. Okay, next we'll have the approval of the minutes. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the minutes of the January 14th meetings. There's a motion, any second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. We have no invited guests under committee and department reports. We have a report from Parks and Rec, Brittany Marmel. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So we had a special called meeting because we couldn't, we didn't have quorum for our December meeting, so we met in January. We voted to pass a couple of things. One of the things that we voted on was to prorate our pool pass hopefully to encourage more people to get a pool pass during the summer months. The next thing was we voted to stop the after school Friday hours uh, once the kids go back to school. Um, Lisa and the staff said that there wasn't many people that were coming to that and they'd rather put the man hours to other events. And then the last thing was to allow staff to be able to re rent pavilions within the 14 day rental period if the patron pays with cash or credit card. Currently, they had to wait two weeks. So this will be better uh, use of our facilities and be um, able to let patrons use it in a shorter notice. So our next meeting will be February 5th. Any questions? So I have a question. So if somebody came in and the pavilion wasn't going to be rented next Saturday, they couldn't rent it because it wasn't a two-week notice? The, it was written that way back when you couldn't readily take credit cards and stuff like that, and it just hadn't been updated. So this was to update that policy so we could take credit cards and cash in within that window. So if somebody came in tomorrow and they were like, hey, I want to rent it, they could now do that. Awesome. That's a good change. Thank you. Okay, next we have an update from Snellville Tourism and Trade. Kelly McAloon. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, we had our volunteer community um, celebration on Saturday. Very well attended. That's for volunteers and sponsors. And it's just so exciting to see so many people participating and just to appreciate them and to have them at that celebration. Um, congratulations to all those who were selected from the various groups who were nominated as Volunteer of the Year. And special thanks to Kathy Emanuel for winning the Marcy Ferris Volunteer of the Year Award. So hands to Kathy. Our Team Snellville volunteers are the best, best around. So um, thank you again to everybody who always helps us in the city do everything because without our wonderful sponsors and volunteers, we would not be able to do what we do for sure. Our board meeting was last Saturday. It was our annual retreat. We're very excited for the upcoming year. It's our 10th year anniversary. This year, we've made a lot of uh, talk about a lot of things, new things we want to do, and a couple of those things are hiring some day labor to help us at events, just because we have the same core of volunteers and everybody's getting younger. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we just need, we need some muscle, we need some help out there. 
because we have grown exponentially over the last nine years. Um, and we also are looking to hire as somebody administratively as well, so that'll be a help, you know, for the whole organization. February 5th is our Commerce Club meeting. Um, we invite everybody to join us. So it's at the community room. Starts at noon. We also invite the business community to join us on February 7th at the New Hampton Inn. So it's from 6 to 8. And I just have to share, uh, I got a phone call. I know Gretchen and Kurt see Ronnie Bentley, you know, and Glennis, they meet them regularly. But Ronnie called me yesterday, and I was just shocked that he called me again tonight. And he called me just before I came here. And he said, please share with everybody that I just love everybody, and thank you, everybody, for your prayers. So uh, it was just so such a blessing to hear his voice, and it just sounded like he was doing good and I. Kurt was saying that you guys, I think, saw them today, so I'm sure you'll elaborate on that, but, you know, hallelujah for that. And I just want to mention, also on February 12th, this isn't a STAT event, this is a Snellville Citizens Police Academy event, but we are having a big fundraiser at Mellow Mushroom. Sales from the total day to go orders everything, 10% back to benefit the Snellville PD, so hope to see everybody out there. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Kelly. Good. And then uh, update from Snowball Youth Commission. Um, good evening, uh, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Good evening, all in attendance. I am here today to give the Snowball Youth Commission our uh, report. On February 23rd, the Snowball Youth Commission will be hosting an event at the City Hall. Everton Blair, the newest um, member of the Board of Education, he's the youngest and first African-American member to be elected to the Board of Education, will be speaking. He will be the guest speaker at the event. And the event will basically be led by students, high school students. It will be student-led seminars, speaking on subjects like community building and individuality. There will be food, games, and prizes. And the theme of the event is becoming better people and how to build better communities. Um, uh, also, applications for the Snowball Youth Commission will be there at, in attendance at the event. And on March 2nd, members of the Snowball Youth Commission will be going to Emory University to partake in poverty simulations. The objective of the poverty simulation is to expose the community to realities of those in poverty. Um, have a good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, Z Josiah. We appreciate all the things that you are all doing with the Youth Commission. Very proud of you guys. Next, we'll have the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the agenda of the January 28th, 2019 meeting. Motion, is there a second? Second. second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. <laughs> we have no items under our public hearing and nothing on our consent agenda or old business. Under new business, we have item A, consideration and action on approval of resolution 2019-03. This resolution is for a polling place change. I don't, some of you may not remember, but um, for the last election, or after the last election, we were anticipating that there would be construction going on here at City Hall, and we wouldn't be able to use the community room for um, a polling place, and so we had moved it officially over to the Senior Center. That construction's not going to take place here in City Hall, so we're just moving it back now. So for the March 19th special election and then for the November election and, and thereafter, um, the polling place will be in the community room, but we do have to pass a resolution to do that. So is there a motion? Motion to approve resolution 2019-03 changing the location for the polling place March 19th special election and the November 5th, 2019 municipal election. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. 
That is five in favor and none opposed. Next we have item B, consideration and action on approval of resolution 2019-04, referendum to submit to the electors of the city of Snellville, Georgia, the question of whether the city of Snellville, Georgia shall be authorized to permit and regulate Sunday sales of distilled spirits or alcoholic beverages for beverage purposes by the drink from 11 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. pursuant to OCGA 3-3-7 and authorizing subsequent sales. Um, what this is, um, some of you might be familiar with this being called the brunch bill. Um, the state legislature last year permitted um, sales of alcoholic beverages on Sunday mornings uh, starting at 11 o'clock. Currently it's 12.30 p.m. and businesses, restaurants want it to be able to be able to serve mimosas and, and beverages like that during Sunday brunches. And so the state legislature has passed that last year to allow um, cities and counties to adopt this, but it goes through referendum. Um, the city's position was we would throw it on the ballot, but when we had an election, and with this March 13th or March 19th special election coming up, we're going ahead and listing that on the ballot as well as the city council seat. Um, so that's what this is about. Any other council members would like to speak or make a comment? Okay, so is there a motion? Motion to approve resolution 2019-04 as described by Mayor Bender. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. So this item will go on the referendum um, for the voters to decide if they want our restaurants to be able to do that. Then we have item C, consideration and action on approval of intergovernmental agreement between the Downtown Development Authority and the City of Snellville for purchase of property. And Mr. Powell's gonna give us a little update on these next two items. Mayor, the C and D are related to really control issues with regard to the relationship between the city and the Downtown Development Authority. The first resolution is one that is an intergovernmental governmental agreement that is requested by the DDA. It's drafted by the DDA's attorney, has the purpose of beginning the process of funding the cobblestone acquisition. You've already approved the contract and it's just coming up with the resources to purchase that. It is the first step in probably a two-step process. There'll be another resolution similar to this one when you go to the construction phase of your town center. So every city that has adopted a, uh, a, a redevelopment of their town center has executed these same type of contracts where the funding is made available. With Cobblestone, most of the the revenue to fund the bond issue is really being the rents from the facility are being utilized to do that. This is not a, a big financial commitment of the city. It's got a cash flow event. But in order for the markets to go and buy the bonds, they require that the city pledge its full faith and credit to back that relationship. So DDA can't just go out and do it on their own. They have to have a resolution like this in order to initiate the funding. And this is just the approval of that relationship. The second one is the control document that you that the city uh, issues every time a piece of property is purchased with city money. Um, that it is it is uh, it's transferred to the DDA when it's part of the town center development. But there is a control aspect of you really can't sell it DDA without the city having a say so in that process. So it's sort of our control document that when they use our money or our full faith and credit, we still control the asset. We're partners with them in that process, so. Okay, with that explanation, is there a motion for item C? Motion to approve the intergovernmental agreement between Downtown Development Authority and City of Snellville for the purchase of the Cobblestone property. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. 
There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. And then item D, consideration and action on approval of resolution 2019-05, resolution to approve the intergovernmental agreement between the Downtown Development Authority and the City of Snellville. Uh, is there a motion? Motion to put the button. Uh, <laughs> motion to approve resolution 2019-05 to approve the intergovernmental agreement between the Downtown Development Authority and the City of Snellville. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. That is five in favor and none opposed. That ends our regular business meeting, so we'll move into council reports. Council Member Marmel. Okay, Council Member Linsky. I had a great opportunity this past weekend to be a judge at a chili competition at our very own Lincoln Fill Station. Um, if you haven't been over to Lincoln Fill Station, it is a great atmosphere. It's the kind of place where you can walk in completely by yourself and leave with at least five friends um, that you know really well. Uh, great representation of what our Snellville community is really about. So I appreciate them including me. Just turn me off. Council Member Schultz. Okay. I, um, I f f first of all want to remind everybody that we have an extended season market this Saturday from 9 to 12 in the parking lot, and I'm hoping it's not too cold. Secondly, on behalf of the farmer's market, I'd like to congratulate Kathy Emanuel. She was our farmer's market volunteer of the year this year and won the uh, Marcy Ferris Volunteer of the Year Award, and we're very proud of her. And, and are so appreciative of all the work she does for the farmer's market, as well as many, many other events in Snellville. Um, it was mentioned that Kurt and I saw Ronnie Bentley today. We um, went and did some uh, grocery shopping for them, and we stopped by to deliver the, um, the uh, groceries. He, he's made amazing progress in a week. He, um, he has a ways to go, obviously, because it was very major 12-hour surgery. But he's, um, he was cheerful, and we, we really enjoyed the opportunity to just stop by for a few minutes. Um, the last thing I, I want to talk about, this photo, when I saw it on Facebook, really, um, it really touched me. It was taken by Lieutenant Dean Brown of the Snellville uh, Police Department. And this is our, our special response team, sometimes known as the SRT team, I guess, praying prior to going out for an arrest, I assume they were uh, making. And they were praying for a good outcome, both for their team members as well as the person that they were about to, to, um, to uh, arrest. And I just thought this was very, very touching and says so much about the quality of the police department that we have. And um, just to know that, that prayer is, is a part of their going out for what could be a very dangerous event, possibly. So I just wanted to uh, share that with you. I, I believe it was on 11alive.com, and that's where it was, uh, that's where the post came, or that's where the uh, link came that was on the Facebook page. So I just wanted to uh, share that because I thought it was pretty special. And that's it. Mayor Pro Tem Emanuel. First of all, I want to thank all the people from St. Oliver's for really chipping in to give Hunger the Boot. Kind of amazing, 5,000 
items were donated. <coughs> Excuse me. And then today I came by City Hall and Melinda Franklin had wheeled the cart outside. It was full and I helped her load it in. She was taking it up to the co-op and I walked in tonight and there's two more bags of food in there for the people. So I think it says a lot about the Snellville community that people are continually coming by making donations and that's not the only place they have to make those donations. And I think we need another uh, shout out to Chief Roy Whitehead because he certainly sets the pace for the Snellville Police Department. And I think our excellent rapport we have with the Police Department and the outstanding job they do time after time after time is because of his leadership. And I think we need to give him a round of applause. <laughs> Will that get me out of a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> He'll just tell you to go online and pay it. Uh, and for the mayor's report, um, I would like to uh, thank STAT for hosting the volunteer appreciation dinner. Uh, it was well attended. It was a very nice evening, and it's just it's nice to be able to to provide that for the people that work so hard all year long for you and just let them know that they're recognized. Um, but that was a really good time. Um, another important issue that's going to be on the ballot in March, March 19th, is Gwinnett County's transit plan. Uh, there is a contract with MARTA included with the plan and there's also a lot of bus uh, routes uh, in that transit plan. It's really, really important that everyone get educated, um, both on the people that are pushing for the, the, a positive outcome and those opposition groups so that you really get to where the truth is on the, uh, on the transit plan and making sure that you're making a good decision. And so what's gonna happen on March 19th, there's actually gonna be, for the city of Snellville voters, you're gonna have two places to go vote. You'll vote here at City Hall for the brunch bill and for council seat post five, and then you'll need to go to your regular polling place for the Gwinnett County's vote on the transit plan. Now, as far as educational opportunities on the transit plan, Gwinnett County has a whole list, I've got it here, of public hearings that they're having across Gwinnett County. And they're hosting one for anyone who doesn't want to travel, there's gonna be one right here at City Hall it's on Saturday, February the 23rd, and it's a Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1. Um, and I know Brian will be putting that out on the Facebook page and keeping people reminded of it. Um, and he'll probably go ahead and put up any that are close proximity here. Um, tonight, they're having one at Grayson City Hall. Of course, you're too late for that now. Um, but there's some others that'll be close by, or maybe it'll be close to you from where work is that you can stop in. They've got some on evenings and then some on the weekends. So I encourage you all to get educated on that um, and um, so that you're ready for that vote on March 19th. And I think that is all I have. So we will open up the floor to public comment. Anyone would like to say anything, just come on up and state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, I will close public comment. Um, we were not able to, to finish our exec session, so we will need to go back into excess, exec session, um, hopefully just about 15 or 20 minutes, and then there will be no action coming out of that meeting. So what do we need? I just need a motion to resume the executive session. Motion to resume the executive session. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. That's five in favor and none opposed. So if we can all be in there by 8.15 at the latest, get out of here quick. Thank you all for coming out and watch the weather.